What's the best saxophone in the world? So you're looking for a new saxophone? Maybe you're dreaming of having a Selmer Mark VI? How about a pink one that used to be owned by Dexter Gordon? So this is Dexter Gordon's Mark VI from 1969. Did you play it? Have you played it? No. Not yet? Too late. That one's already been sold. What time is it now? Well, it's 11. So, <laughs> I spent one hour in the shop. That's great. So here I am at the IK Gottfried shop in Copenhagen, where I used to work. Or right here on a Saturday afternoon. I used to work right at that bench right there fixing saxophones. The new owner of the, of the Dexter Gordon? I don't know if I'm lucky, but <laughs> wow. I'm willing to pay. <laughs> I bought some of your books. Oh yeah? Yes, on the, on the net. You know. Okay, good, thank you. Now you have something, something to practice them on. <laughs> <laughs> and this is my good friend and legendary saxophone player, Bob Rockwell. We sat down and talked about our favorite subject, saxophones. I asked Bob what's so special about Selmer Mark Sixes. This is mine, serial number 166,000. Why does everyone always want to know the serial number? And the Mark Sixes, you know, are a myth. And I mean, some there's a very few good ones. So I thought it would be fun to try out all these saxophones. I'm, this is like a, I'm in a, a sea of Mark Six tenor saxophones. I, get, I was gonna get a, a Mark VI alto. And I mean, we went to the dealer in Minneapolis and I must have tried at least 15 Mark VI altos. And I didn't buy one of them, man. They were all out of tune. Yeah. They, it was a total, it was, they were terrible. Even Just, brand new. Even yeah. brand new. They're all different. This one is gold plated. This one has no lacquer on it. This one is silver plated. This one over here looks like it's been re-lacquered. And I got another one over here. It looks like it's got, well, the lacquer's worn off. It, there wasn't one that you could, you could take on a gig. The altos especially have had, you know, because they kept changing the bow sizes. Selmer didn't know what they were doing, and they changed their horns all the time, and the Mark VI right. got changed constantly. So that can be attributed to the, some are good, some are like, oh, oh the guy's know. going like, oh yeah, you know, the serial number's here, it's like, this is the one. You know, I've tried them like close to each other, and they're not the same. And That's one thing about these Mark VI saxophones, is there's a big difference, there can be at least, from one to the next, unlike some of the more modern saxophones like Yamaha's and Yanagisawa's and even the, the newer Summers that have a bit more consistency from one to the next. But then if you got that, you got that one horn, but like, you know, you go buy a Moriat, you can always get another one. Yeah. You buy a Yanagisawa, you can always get another you one. You can always get another one. Okay, so we're gonna start off with this. This is a gold-plated Mark VI, 70,000 serial number and so you think there are some mystical mark sixes with superpowers out there's, there no there's some really good mark sixes this one I know, this horn used to be mine it's a hundred thousand serial number i'm pretty sure it was re-lacquered at some point point. Hundred forty-six thousand mark six tenor this looks to have been de-lacquered hundred and twenty two thousand Silver plate, it looks to be original silver plate. But as another friend of ours <laughs> said to me, Peter Yesen, yeah. uh, said that the only reason there's so many good Mark Sixes right now is because they've been repaired so much. So this is the thing, as from a repairman standpoint, they're a nightmare. 66,000, okay, now this horn looks like it's been through a war. The neck has got bits of brass, on the sides, there was a pickup that has been patched over. The lacquer has pretty much all been worn off, it appears. <laughs> the bow, there's like, a, there's been some extensive repair. It looks like this whole tone, this whole E-flat tone hall has been rebuilt. It's had a lot of work done on it. Okay, my 
first, I have to just playing a few notes on it. First impressions, this is like a player's horn. I've, I've had a lot of horns, man, you know. Yeah. I've had really a lot of horns. I've had two cons, I've had a chew, and I've, I've got it, still got a 10M, which is a killer. And I've had, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven Mark Sixes. This one has been played a lot. Usually the ones that you see in these really been beat up kind of condition like this, that means they've been played, they've been on the road, they've been, they've been used for decades by good players. And although, you know, people try to buy used horns in really good shape, when you see one like this, you should stop for a second and say, hmm, maybe it's all beat up because it's really been played because it's a player. I've had, you know, a uh, king cuff that is Kyle Worth. Yeah. You've had some superb one. You had all the new Selmers I, back. I remember when I, I had was all there. the new Selmers. Yeah. I've had every, I haven't had a Series 3. I had uh, Borgani. Yeah, that's right. I remember you had a Borgani at some so point. So I had just quite a few horns. Now. Maybe I shouldn't have sold that one. That's one thing people are always asking. What horn should I buy? What mouthpiece should I buy? What reed should I buy? You know, people are always asking. I'll try anything. Like, my whole thing is to be as different from anybody else as possible. That's why you, you don't see me playing the same equipment as anybody else. Okay. Maybe that's why these days you see so many pro players of the highest level that have given up their Mark VI for some other option, whether that be Phil Woods and his Yamaha, or Bob Mincer and his Eastman 52nd Street, or Eric Alexander and his Ishimori, Vincent Herring on his Yanagasawa, and these days Yamaha. I haven't played on a, on a, on a Mark VI with an Autolink mouthpiece <laughs> in, <laughs> but you, probably in, you know. Right, but you did, I did, you I know did for a, I did for a minute here okay. for a couple years. Uh, right. uh, but I took a break from after my Borgani period and I was looking around for something. And, I, and then I, it, you know, then I said, you know. The moral of the story, the Selmer Mark VI is highly overrated and overpriced. So here's my take as a teacher, a player, a repair technician, and general saxophone advice giver. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably noticed that I'm usually playing a Yanagisawa. That's because I genuinely prefer to play on my Yanagisawas, even though this isn't great saxophone. I've owned two Mark VI tenors, but I've played many, many, many in the repair shops that I've worked in, the horns that I've overhauled for, for customers. I've played many of them. I think the difference, the biggest difference between a really good Mark VI and just an okay or not so good Mark VI is the neck. If you've got one with a good neck, then the rest of the horn can be gotten into shape with a good repair technician. It's gonna take a lot of work and, a, and a, usually a pretty serious investment to get one of these old vintage horns to play like a new horn. I've worked like crazy on this saxophone, uh, on the, especially on the mechanisms, getting the key heights right so it plays as well in tune as I can get it. Uh, replacing the springs, getting the right tension. It's, it's been a lot of work. There was dents, there was damage to the body. All of that stuff had to be fixed 
meticulously, carefully, and it took a long time. And if I were to have done that for someone else, I would have charged a lot of money. Now, I can safely say this pretty much plays like a good new saxophone. And I love it. It's a great horn. I still prefer my Yanagizawa's though. No saxophone plays perfectly in tune, but with proper adjustment, you can get a Mark VI to play as well in tune as pretty much any other professional horn. The Selmer Mark VI horns are prone to quite a lot of mechanical problems for a variety of reasons. Number one, they're all old. And old saxophones, especially ones that have been played a lot, the mechanisms, the metal on the mechanisms wears down, which creates play so that these keys have extra movement. I've taken out the play in this horn, but you'll see with most vintage horns, there's some extra movement in these keys. That extra movement is going to cause you leaks no matter how well you adjust the pads. Even when you've got a great Selmer Mark VI with an excellent neck, restored to play like a new saxophone, it's still probably not the greatest saxophone in the world, my personal opinion. When I pick this horn up, like I just did, and play it after not playing it for a while, I'm always like, wow, that's a great horn. I love that horn. Why don't I play this horn? And then I go and I play my Yanagisawa and I say, ah, that's why. So I'm not saying that this is not an amazing saxophone. It is. It's just not as amazing as some other saxophones that are being made today. I think if I played Yamaha, some of the new Selmers, or any one of a number of other great saxophones that are being made today, I would feel the same way. The bottom line is the Selmer Mark VI can be a great saxophone, but it comes with a lot of headaches, and most importantly, it comes with a big price tag on a popular saxophone website that has classified ads for selling used saxophones, I just counted 35 different listings within the last month and a half selling Selmer Mark VI saxophones. With that many for sale, one has to ask why. Hey, listen, if you paid too much for your Selmer Mark VI, I'm sorry. But other than collector's horns, there's nothing to justify a price tag higher than some of the great top-of-the-line saxophones being made today. Those are already pretty expensive. If you think you need to get a Selmer Mark VI to sound your best, then I hope I've given you some food for thought on this subject. The truth is, it's not about what saxophone you're playing, or even what mouthpiece or reed or ligature you're playing. It's not about that, it's about the work you put in. Get something good, get something solid, get something reliable that's fun to play, and stick with it. I have lots of horns because it's fun. If you want to have fun and collect saxophones, please, by all means, do so. But if you're working on really getting good at playing a saxophone, don't get caught up in the equipment. It's a waste of time. Get something solid, get something good, and practice. Now, I know I'm going to hear from a lot of you on this subject, so the comments section below is the place to discuss. Let us know which saxophone you replaced your Mark VI with, or let us know why you're sticking with your Mark VI and why you think it's the greatest horn for you. As always, if you got some value out of this video, please click the thumbs up. Go ahead and share this with anybody else who might be interested, and thanks for watching.